Hello and welcome to the final video in two series actually, the Nano Drac build, link below, but also the iNav for Beginners build because I have been using this as a teaching uh, platform to go through all my iNav setups. Now this is the maiden video, so let me show you how this thing flew. Um, surprise, surprise, it flew absolutely fantastic. Uh, and I haven't really changed anything from wow. how we set it up in the iNav for Beginners 2020 series. A uh, couple of things before I went to the field, did make sure that I could get a 3D lock and that I could arm it without the prop on and uh, that I could spin the prop and everything was working okay. I did reduce the throws of the servos using the rates in iNav, uh, they were moving way too much so I did reduce them a little bit as I said I might. Uh, I did install the iNav script onto the radio. Uh, I'll put a link below to how you do that. I just like to have the radio while I'm waiting for the GPS to lock at the field. Rather than keep pulling my goggles down, uh, I just tend to like the radio to announce to me when it has a GPS lock and all that stuff's done. And uh, just recheck the center of gravity, uh, direction of control surfaces and everything before I put it in the back of the car and went to the field. So let's go on to the images from the field and I'll talk you through how that all worked and how the Maiden went. So let me just very quickly run through what the on-screen display looks like so that as I show you the footage from the Maiden, you can kind of figure out what it's showing you. If you're familiar with on-screen displays, this is going to be nothing new, but hopefully this will help you find the information that I'm talking about. So in the top left-hand corner, we have the number of satellites and the HDOP. The HDOP is the quality of the GPS lock, and ideally that needs to be under 2.0, and the system won't arm unless it is. The other thing you'll notice in the left-hand side in the middle is the speed indicator that is set for miles an hour for me. I'm just interested to see how fast this thing is going to go. I haven't set it up with the idea of it being particularly quick, but if I get a chance at the maiden to give it a blip, then I will. In the top right hand corner, we have both the flight mode and under that we have the throttle position. So you'll notice most of the maidening I'm doing, I'm running about 50% throttle. This is quite a quick little model. Under that, we have the altitude and then under that what i've also put on here is the pitch of the model as well now i'm interested in this because as i'm flying straight and level as we sit up on the bench hopefully it shouldn't be gaining or losing height at cruise throttle if it is then i can just watch this video back and kind of see how many degrees i'm off and then reset that on the bench so a couple of things to think about when you're going to maiden at the field first of all is as always before any flight recheck your center of gravity and do your high five check make sure that everything is moving okay in manual mode and when it's put into angle mode the corrective movement is still okay double check all the linkages and your prop is securely fastened and you've got a fully charged battery personally i like to fly angle mode uh, you can use manual or acro 2 once you get confident with inav uh, the angle mode is actually really good it kind of takes care of all the trimming for you and then once you're happy that that's working and that the uh, the level that you've set within inav isn't horrible then try something like a gps loiter and it should go around the position in the sky that you initiated that mode and if that works, then you can try a GPS return to home. Don't try too much on your first flight. This is a maiden flight. It is a shakedown. You're going to make sure that everything's working. And don't be afraid if something doesn't feel right to bring the craft in and land it and check it. It can take two or three maiden flights to run through this entire checklist. Sometimes you'll maiden a model and you'll find that it's always climbing because you set the nose too high. It's better to land and take care of that in iNav before you try the GPS flight modes. So with all that said, let me show you how the Maiden went. Ready? Yep. Ready. She's away. Okay, she flies. Yeah, that's very stable, very stable. Oh, it does, doesn't it? A good scream. It's the Drax scream.
Now, when we launched it, it we launched it into a bit of a wind actually, and it was uh, it was very stable, very stable. Wow. That's six, well, that was about sixty miles an hour. Jeez. Fifty percent Oh well, you got to take it for a run. <laughs> Come on. You can't help yourself, can you? Bring it across. Right, bring it across. Oh, there we go. I'm going to line us up. We'll do yeah. a run down, yeah. the, down the runway. Right. No. Okay, let me come, let me bring around. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay, this is as stupid as the other one. It looks incredibly stable, considering it's a bit of a blustery day. It's actually, I'm flying it in Angleworth, and it's really, really good. Ready, ready for yeah, go on. It looks very cool, actually. It really does. Coming up. Whoa, yes, he come. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Oh, oh. Upside down. Yeah. <laughs> it caught, as it came in, it just tipped on a wing. So there we have it. That was the maiden. Still in one piece. A uh, little bit of a dodgy landing, but uh, this model is pretty bulletproof. Now, one of the things you probably noticed was I was just checking that as I was flying straight and level, I wasn't rising and sinking too much. The good news is, is that the angle, remember we put some uh, things under the nose, we use post-it notes uh, to kind of tell the flight controller what level felt like, it was pretty spot on. If it wasn't, I could go back and redo that by either adding or taking away a little bit of nose up attitude. Next couple of jobs, once you've got that first maiden done, you can try an auto trim and an auto tune. I'll put links in the description. Auto trim sets the control surfaces on the plane. So in manual mode and acro mode, you can actually fly it uh, and uh, it'll be straight and level because you don't ever touch the trims on the radio. Obviously, auto-tune is going to get it flying really good. Now, I was blown away by how well this thing flew on the PIDs that are there, so I think they're pretty close. But an auto-tune potentially would get me even closer. Uh, I would add a GPS flight mode, uh, return to home flight mode to a switch, and that way it'll come back to you in the event of a problem. And I would also go into configurator, go into the CLI, and type in dump and save that contents that's on the screen into a file and that will then keep all of your settings for future reference uh, also handy in case anything happens to your flight controller or something else a couple other things you can try there is a mode called auto launch that i'm going to start to use on here now i'm happy that it flies really nicely auto launch allows you to just throw it at the field and it takes off on its own that's really good again I've got videos about that and also just when you uh, 
first getting into RNAV, I'd practice where that GPS returned to home ODIR switch is on your radio uh, and just make sure that your instinct when something goes wrong is to hit that switch. Um, I've had a couple of friends who had this kind of stuff set up and then when they actually needed that switch, they were, oh, ah, oh, ah, oh, and they couldn't remember in time. And by the time they'd remembered that, it was all over and uh, the model was in pieces in the middle of the field. So those are the key things. Again, if you're interested in this stuff, do make sure you're liking and subscribing the videos and uh, put the bell notification icon on so you'll see the future iNav and drag and build content as it comes on the channel. Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the Inner Circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to or for Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.